My guest today is Regina Mullins, one of the women I met at Thistle Farms Cafe in Nashville, Tennessee, a community of women survivors of prostitution, trafficking, and addiction. As her life was being restored, Regina stayed dedicated to keep the promise she had made to her friends. Today, Regina is a part of the outreach program at Thistle Farms, working tirelessly with the message that love truly can heal. I am Tai Chi. At 19, I was a superstar and I was lost inside. I left it all behind, switched continents and started all over. Years later, I found myself lost again, this time in the American dream. This is a story about awakening, about living the life you were created for, about going inward and discovering the joyous and purposeful person you and I are both meant to be. This is Waking Up in America. I had just moved to Nashville when in the fall of 2015, a friend invited me to visit Thistle Farms and join the meditation circle. My friend could not have known the avalanche of transformation that this meditation circle brought into my own life. There, I met these women who drew me in with their stories, with their courage, and with their tremendous witness that love heals. Well, as I spoke to many women there, um, I, um, one, one name kept coming up. They said, you need to talk to Regina Mullins. Hi. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for being having me. You know, Regina, Doris, who was in one of the episodes, mm -hmm. she kept saying, you have to have Regina because she's the one that, um, because of her, I am here and my wow. life is restored. That's awesome. It's really because of God, though. And, you know, just the grace and the mercy that he gives us all. And um, when he does bring us out, just like I've always told the women, if he brought me out, then I'm going to find the way out and I'll be back. And so if he brought me out, then I'm charged with showing someone else how to get out of that lifestyle, out of the darkness, and how to live in the light and the life that we're supposed to live, you know. Um, and Becca Stevens, she did that for me. Yes. She was my lifeline into um, what love heals me, yes. what love means. And this is you the know? t shirt, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, a lot of us, we don't know what love is. Mm -hmm. We don't know what real love looks like. And um, in 97, I'm coming out of prison for the last time, um, walking into uh, what was supposed to be a new life, I didn't believe it. Right. I, I really didn't. Um, just being in circles, streets, jails, streets, uh, prison. You know, there's yeah. so little that we know of, of a life that you've lived. We see the movies that, like you say, it's just a roman, romanticized version. Or we right. see, we read like stories. Like the pretty woman. Like the pretty yeah. woman. Or, you know, or we also hear very difficult stories, very hard stories. But, you know, when I, what I felt at Thista Farms is this tremendous courage and this testimony that transformation is possible, it is even possible. with these lives. It's so real. I want to know your childhood. I want to know your best memory from your childhood. I want to know, Regina, a little girl. What were you dreaming of? Being Miss America. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we used to, when I was in the, I believe the fourth grade, um, we lived in North Nashville in a shotgun house is what we call them today, just straight through. Okay. And in the front yard, there was this brick, um, brick wall in front of our house. And I used to practice walking down that brick wall and doing my wave for Miss America one day. You know, um, why, I remember. Why, why was that? Yeah. Because the applause, the, um, the grandeur of doing something uh, to give back to the people. The people oh, loved her. Yes. The people loved her, and uh, she was very beautiful, always. And I just saw myself being that one day. Did you feel yourself beautiful? Yes. Oh, At God. that time, yes. yes. <laughs> and you know, as we at as, that time, yes. Yes, because we as kids, we don't have any fears. Right. We believe <laughs> that we are that princess. Right. But, you know, back in those days, that was back in the early 70s, maybe, um, growing up. And when you would walk around coming up in my generation, uh, it's like my grandmother and my mother, you know, they would say stuff like, you're being mannish. 
you're being fast, you're being womanish, you know? And so it was like, I'm not supposed to be that. So it kind of took away but then the inspiration of you can do whatever you want to do, but you got to stay in school, you got to stay in those books, and you got to stay in church. I was telling you earlier that um, I was raised in church, and I ended up hating church. My mother had us in church all the time. Oh. <laughs> she did. I couldn't wait to get out of church. But you know what? I found myself remembering walking down those streets, um, smoking dope, and turning tricks and hearing my mother's voice because I had become alienated from her. But I still uh, remembered the things that she had told me. Gina, God loves you. Gina, turn around and just come back, you know. But I thought that um, doing my promiscuousness early as a teenager, at 16 I was pregnant because I was promiscuous and sneaking out <laughs> doing things that I shouldn't have been doing. And I had my first son at 17. And uh, I was thinking that I had made God so mad at me that there was no way back to God. If I ever was supposed to know him, he surely wasn't gonna take me back. Mm -hmm. But growing up and after I had my two other sons and ending up in the streets, on the streets, in and out of jail and prisons, I always used to remember what my mom had said. It was in the back of my head that God loves you and he has a plan for you mm -hmm. and you just need to come back, come back home, come back to church. And I was just like, church, no. No. That's, what, <laughs> that's why it was so hard when I came out of prison this last time in 97 and I heard about this place uh, for women such as myself and that it was run by a priest I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> and we'll come back to that. <laughs> We're talking to Regina Mullins about her story of, of, of transformation and life restored. Do you feel stuck in life? Are you waiting for a miracle? Would you like to transform your pain and anxiety into joy and freedom? Here's how. The answers are in my book, Turning Points. There are dozens of stories of people like you People stuck in addictions, abuse, and bad relationships. But they all took that first step. They all went on a transformational journey, and so can you. Visit wakingupprevolution.com, amazon.com, or any major online bookseller. Get your copy and turn your life around today. We're talking to Regina Mullins, and I thank you so much for, for sharing your story on, on, on our show for our viewers. Probably. It takes, takes courage. Thank you. So you're talking about how you, 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 you still have this, your mother's voice. Yes. And God loves you. Even yes. as you go, as you have your, your, your first son at 17. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about, you speak about, is it shame or is it guilt? Or what was it that you said? It you was felt? shame and it was guilt mm -hmm. because I knew the way that I was brought up. I knew what she had taught me. And I knew that all of her words, although I didn't understand them back then, they just came real to life to me. And I have to ask, because so many women don't, why did you keep your son? <laughs> I wanted my baby. I wanted my son. I wanted to love. I wanted someone to love and someone to love me. Even it was never a thought of abortion yeah. or adoption or I come from a, a family on both sides my mother and my father's sides my father's side my mother my grandmother has 13 had 13 kid children and my grandmother on my mother's side had 12 children and so and there's always love I've always been shown love in my family uh, all of the children all of the uncles and mm. I just, I wanted my baby. Wow. So tell me what happened to you that, that you ended up in such a hard place. Curiosity happened. I was, like I said earlier, um, really promiscuousness and curiosity and um, being disobedient because of following the so-called popular crowd and being curious, um, that ended me up um, being pregnant at 16 and having a baby right. at 17. 
and also married at 17. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also married. And um, that ended up in a very, very, very abusive relationship that I came out of in 81. Um, getting away from him, then ending up really trying to figure out what was happening in the world and ending up um, on the streets. Um, well, like I said, starting from escort, then going to selling drugs, to using drugs, and then into my own prostitution. It sounds like the abusive relationship, the, the, all the, you know, the, the, like you saying promiscuous lifestyle, uh, uh, trying to follow the other crowd, mm -hmm. really forgetting Disobedience. who... Disobedience. Uh, but mm -hmm. forgetting who Regina is, this beautiful girl who says, I want to be a beauty queen so that I can help others and inspire right. others. And so it's, it's a hard place to have that much disconnect. And then it sounds like you were just pulled into that dark place. I was and didn't even know it, that I was being pulled. Mm. I was talking about, you know, the more... Um, I got curious about the marijuana, then I got curious about the wine, and then I got curious about tooting cocaine, and I was just like, I'm not doing that anymore because of sores. But then got curious about cooking dope up oh. and selling it and then mm -hmm. using it, and didn't know that I was on a downward spiral. And all of that now puts you in jail? Mm-hmm. On jails, mm -hmm. several occasions. Back and forth, back and forth, in and out, in and out. And in 1996, um, and you mentioned to me when we talked before the show how jail felt like a deliverance, like a it chance was. to start over. It was in 1996. Amazing. I went to jail for the last time, and I wanted to go. I was on the street one morning, and um, I was a known prostitute by now, right? And uh, a police car came down the street, and they did a U-turn and came back to tell me, uh, when they come back up the street, I better not be out there. They were going to take me to jail. But little did they know, I had just finished praying. And I was like, I do believe, but if you're real, show me. I, I, I need help me. Help me. Because I didn't want to, I didn't want to turn one more trick. I didn't want to smoke one more piece of dope. I wanted freedom. I wanted to go home. I wanted to be a mother to my boys. I wanted to be a daughter to my parents. You know, um, I had just isolated myself from all of that. And um, so they weren't going to take me to jail. And so I reached down and I picked up a rock and I threw it at their windows. And guess what? They took, took me to jail. jail. Yes. Wow. When we come back, we'll talk about that turning point in Regina's life that now gave her life back. Regina, now you're in in prison, in jail, mm -hmm. and now your turning point happens. Mm -hmm. Your big turning that point, your day. answer to the prayer. Mm -hmm. He delivered me to jail, you know, and it was like, okay, God is not mad at me because he sent me to CCA. I was so happy to go and get my little tetanus and the little TB stuff and then go to the unit and dress out and put on my little uniform and just lay down and finally rest. You yeah. know, just being up for days and nights and, um, and nobody was enduring the, yeah. you know, the different times that the rapes, uh, the beatings or the robbings or just that whole lifestyle. I was so happy to start believing that I've got another chance. And the whole time I was there, I did a program. I went into this program. Um, it's an aid, alcohol and drug program called Chances. And I was just like, now how ironic is that? Thank you, yes. guys. Thank you. He was saying, I get another chance, right? And um, while I was in the counselor's office, I had just made parole, and I went into our counselor's office, and one of the girls that I had been incarcerated with happened to call in. And I always say that that was not a coincidence mm -hmm. that day because I was like, I was happy that I made parole, but I was also scared 
is I don't know what. And I was just like, I don't want to go back out right. and live the same lifestyle. I don't want to go and um, say I'm going to go home and be a mother to my children and end up back on the streets. You know, I just I didn't want to do that. So I didn't know what to do. And when she called in that day, um, she was telling me about this program because she had made parole too, right? right? And she paroled out and she was at this place and um, excuse my language, uh, at the, I'm over here with all the hoes. This lady's done made a place for all the hoes, right? And I was like, I'll, I'm not doing that anymore. And she was just like, no, no, I, this oh, not like wow. that. She said, girl, it's run by a priest. And she's like, it's a two-year program and you can come. We don't have to pay no rent. We don't have to do anything. She's created this for us, right? And I was just like, okay, two years under a priest? <laughs> what was your first thought? I don't think no. so. No. <laughs> you know, because it was like, in my mind, I had stereotyped her. Right. I had thought about this black shirt and the white collar, and I'm going to be in confession every day, and Lord knows I got a lot to confess, mm. and I don't think so for two years. And you were talking about Becca Stevens. I was talking about Reverend Becca, Becca Stevens. Stevens. Oh, my goodness. Who is the founder I of had, Thistle Farms? Mm -hmm. She is the founder of Magdalene and Thistle Farms. Yeah. And um, Magdalene started with just five of us, five women, that she was thinking about. While I was on the street praying and asking God for help, he had already used Becca to create a place for us to come off the streets. Yes. Okay, so tell me about the house. We walk in, there's furniture, and there's beautiful furniture, and plants, and we walk through, and then I'm walking into this bedroom that's got beautiful comforters and curtains, and, and then I walk into the kitchen, and they've got real dishes in the kitchen. And I'm looking at the glasses, the pots, and the pans, and and I started to cry. And the girls was just like, what are you punking out for? What are you crying for? You know. And it was like, for the first time in a long time, I remembered what home was like. Mm. I remembered that I had a home. And, um, and I felt safe, and I felt home, you know. And I was just like, man, do y'all realize where we just come from? We just came from metal cots in prison. We yeah. just came from abandoned houses. And here it is for you because you're worth right. it. Right. Yes. But here goes the hit that I still didn't believe mm. that this was free because we just come from people. They don't do that. And I was just like, who is this lady? Who is Becca Stevens? Who is this priest? Really a priest and there's not a hook to it? We don't have to pay nothing for real. We don't have to do anything for real. So it was like about six months I was looking for this hook that was never there. Oh, and that's what con unconditional love is all about. It was unconditional about. love. And we didn't yes. know that. Yes. And she taught us that. Mm, she yes. gave me a key to come into a house to live. And it wasn't like she didn't live there. We lived there together, us five women. And I told Becca, I said, what you did was you taught me how to trust myself. Yes, because she trusted you taught, me. She trusted me enough to let me live there and do the right thing, even when I thought nobody was looking in the and midst. And now you are the princess, Regina. You are <laughs> restored. Uh, and you are reaching out to others. How many women did you help? Oh, oh my goodness, I cannot count. But the thing is, is that this one face is the face of many that are wanting to find a way out. I remember telling Becca, my brother, when I first got clean, had me some cards made, right, that says, women in recovery, we do recover. And every time I used to see one of the girls on the street, I would give them a card and I was just like, y'all call me, y'all call me, because man, I know this lady and she's trying to help us off the street, right? So it would be like about three or four o'clock in the morning and they would start ringing the phone at the house that yeah. I was at. And the other, my other housemates would be like, uh, Becca, she's on the phone at four o'clock in the morning. And, and I started telling Becca, we got to do something. You need to get a big house. Yes. <laughs> you need we to get a big house best. because these women, they yes. want off the street. And she was just like, well, what do you want me to do, Regina? I was just like, I don't know. We got to do something. And we created to, uh, an outreach to just like take the women lunch on the street, toiletries, safe sex packets, and not to beat them over the head, 
She showed me what real love was. It wasn't about condemning somebody. You need to go to church, you need the Lord, you need to be in the hospital somewhere, but it was just loving somebody right where they were. She yeah. taught me how to do that and to go and just let them know when you're ready, we'll be here. Thank you so much for, for, uh, for bringing that message to us. You're so welcome. When we come back, we have a little bit more from Regina Mullins. Are you planning a live event? Looking to bring inspiration and a fresh approach to wake up your community or organization? Tai Chi's keynote concerts are transformational experiences that lead your audience to a life of joy, authenticity, courage, and purpose. Book Tai Chi for your next event now by visiting wakinguprevolution.com. We're talking to Regina Mullins, who's got an amazing story of, of ups and downs, of life's darkness, and hope that love heals. So now we're gonna go a little on a lighter side and do have some fun with, okay. are you ready? Mm. One word answers. What brings you most joy? My boys. One thing you're most grateful for? God. Your biggest fear? Not being heard. If you could be anywhere in the world right now, you would be? With my mother and father on the General Jackson. That's a lot of words. That's I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. No problem. I keep problem. forgetting one word. No, no, one no, word. No problem. Your favorite comfort food? Ton of greens. Top thing on your bucket list? Hawaii. Ooh, nice. I go with you. If you could go back in time, what would you take with you that you have today? My courage. Mm, tea or coffee? Coffee. Lavender or roses? <laughs> roses. Singing or dancing? Singing. Chips or cookies? Cookies. Last photo you took with your iPhone or your phone? My mom at Motown. All the world <laughs> needs is? More love. If I could abolish anything from the earth, it would be? Hatred. This year, you claim? Victory. Yes, wonderful. Okay, Regina, I have an email from a viewer, Anna from Germany. Anna writes, Living near the Czech border and sometimes driving over to Czech for shopping or driving to the nearest gas station, I often see those women standing beside the roads and my heart feels like bleeding. Not because the women decided to stand there for whatever reason they have, but that their country and society, their community, is not willing to keep them from rape and abuse. Fifteen years ago, our national government made prostitution a legal business as they claimed to get the women out of darkness of illegal criminals. But what happened? Even more prostitution developed and only the state even earns the money from it in social insurance. So her question is, have you ever heard from women caught in prostitution that they expected better circumstances and treatment in their situation if prostitution was legalized. Yes. And I think, I, and I have heard that. I've heard women talk about if they legalize prostitution, um, how would they, how would the government be any different than a pimp? Yeah. You know? And um, one of my um, answers, because I've got many suggestions or what I call solutions, would be that when we really find out, you know, or when we really realize that we cannot make a profit off of somebody else's body or either trick them into the lie or believing that they can profit off of their body and it's going to be okay, um, we'll come up with more solutions yes. in trafficking. We can end trafficking also because we can't, you know, we, it's not okay to sell my friend or to trick my friend into thinking that you're doing something good when it's unhealthy for you or you can end up losing, losing your life while I make a profit off of it. That's not good. Yes, and I, and I think you know that change has to be really deeply cultural, like you said. A lot of times what you find is, is that it starts with the young kids. Yes. There's no uh, telling what has happened to a lot of our young girls because in this field right here, or just coming and going back into the valley, so to speak, you find out there's a lot of abuse in, with the girls and the little boys. So you have to go back and revisit 
yes, those pains, uh, those scars, and absolutely, absolutely, be willing and, to deal with it. And and we also have to look at the what is the message that the media is saying, that the music, the pop music, that you know, and not all just pop it. music, but yes, all of it is all portraying it. and saying to these young people. Thank you so much, Regina. You're so welcome. I really, thank really, y'all for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for your courage for sharing your story. Wildflower with graffiti on your skin. Names of friends, names of places that you won't see again. Wildflower, your smile says it all. You found peace where it counts. Learn to stand when you and you are blessed feel the heart in your chest healing the emptiness God in you God in you home and you're a wildflower and you're more beautiful than all the Everything is falling apart And you are blessed Feel the heart in your chest Healing the emptiness God in you, God in you home And you're a wildflower And you're more someone that needs healing? Are you someone that needs to be told that you are worth it? That you too can have the path of healing no matter where you've been? Or perhaps you know someone who, who has been there and you would like to know how to reach out to them and how to tell them that yes, love heals everybody. I invite you to share this episode and Regina's powerful story with them and also log on to thistlefarms.org where you can look up their stories. You can also see how you can get involved, attend a workshop, maybe invite Regina and, and other women as a speaker to your community to bring healing and understanding how can we, you and I, make a difference. Visit Waking Up Revolution for more inspiration and to engage with us. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.